Hello everyone, I'm your host, Joseph J. McAllister. Tonight I'm going to take you through the tragic life of Carlton E. Watkins, one of America's greatest photographers. We'll recant his life's work, successes, and eventual downfall. Ah, the life of an artist, tragically filled with pain, suffering, and an early demise, only to be recognized a hundred years after they've already passed on to the great beyond, and the vultures swoop in to feed on the remains. Go ahead and put the horses in the stable, dim the lanterns and stoke the fire, and pour a cup of hot apple cider. For it's time to take another terrifying and delightful journey into photography's dark history. In steps Carlton E. Watkins. Before there was Ansel Adams, there was Carlton E. Watkins, 1829 through 1916. Watkins was an American photographer in the 19th century. Born in New York, he moved to California and got caught up in that wild sweeping fad photography. His medium was landscape photography and his palette was Yosemite. Watkins' photographs of Yosemite significantly influenced Congress to preserve it as a national park. One day in July 1861, Watkins packed up all of his belongings and decided to move to Yosemite. He brought with him his mammoth plate camera, which took 18 by 22 inch plates, and his stereoscope camera, which he used to make stereoscope slides, which was an early form of 3D photography. He returned to New York with 30 mammoth plates and 100 stereoscope images. These images were some of the first photographs seen of Yosemite in the East. In 1864, Watkins was hired to photograph Yosemite for the California State Geological Survey. Watkins' photographs had a profound influence on politicians debating Yosemite's preservation as a national park. His photographs did more than capture images of the park. They were iconic in his day. For example, Half Dome did already exist. But Watkins' photos brought it to people in a way that they could experience it and also influenced travelers to see Yosemite in person. Watkins' photographs had a wide sweeping influence on Yosemite's future. It's said that Senator John Connes passed Watkins' photographs around Congress and his photographs influenced Abraham Lincoln to sign the Yosemite Valley Grant Act. This legislation preserved the land for public use and set a precedent for the American National Park System. One of Yosemite's mountains is actually named Mount Watkins in honor of Watkins' work in preserving Yosemite Valley. All right, let's talk a little bit about Watkins' studio, which was named Yosemite Art Gallery. In 1866, Watkins opened his first public gallery. He also sent photographs to the Universal Expedition in Paris where he won a medal. At his Yosemite gallery he displayed over a hundred large photographic plates and over a thousand stereoscope images. So if you can imagine this was quite a, an extensive show. I mean it was massive. So at this time Watkins was at the pinnacle of success. Despite his success as an artist he was not successful as a businessman and ended up losing his entire gallery to creditor J.J. Cook. All right, now let's talk about Tabor and the new series. When Cook and photographer Isaiah Tabor took over the Yosemite Art Gallery, they began reproducing his work without giving him credit. The 19th century had no copyright laws for photographs, and there was nothing Watkins could do to combat the plagiarism. Subsequently, he began recreating all of his lost work and calling it the new series, Watkins and Francis Sneed. Watkins met Francis Sneed while photographing in Virginia City. They became romantically involved in 1878 and were married a year later on Watkins' 50th birthday. The couple had two children, Julia in 1881 and son Colin 
in 1863. All right, now let's talk about his decline. Watkins began to lose his sight in the 1890s at the age of 61. His last commission was for Phoebe Hearst to photograph her Hacienda del Pozo de Verona. Watkins was unable to complete this job due to his failing sight in 1895. His lack of work led to an inability to pay rent. His family had to move into an abandoned railroad cart for 18 months. San Francisco Earthquake, 1906. Watkins kept the majority of his work in a studio on Market Street in San Francisco. The studio was destroyed in 1906 San Francisco Earthquake and Fire. With countless pictures, negatives, and the majority of his stereoscope views destroyed. After the earthquake, he retired to Cape Ranch, Napa State Hospital for the Insane. Three years after Watkins retired, he was declared incompetent and put into the care of his daughter Julia. She cared for him for a year before committing him to Napa State Hospital for the Insane in 1910. At which point his wife Frances Watkins began referring to herself as a widow. Well, there's another tragic and delightful story of another great American photographer. I'm your host Joseph J. McAllister. Like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, try to enjoy the light.